and VG Gaming off to a good start on their morph point. And this is a hero that really does not play well from behind. That's why I think uh, the panel were, first of all, surprised because we don't see Morphling in general. But secondly, they were talking about how they needed a fighting carry early on. And Morphling is... Waveform is pretty good for fighting early, but that's like everything you have. You, you're not really much reliable outside of that until you start getting some, some decent core items, such as the shotgun build. Um, so it's very important that Hal gets his, uh, his farming speed increased here so that he can play out the game plan for Vichy. Yeah. Moving forward in his items. I also want to keep tabs on uh, March because uh, we did see the effect where if you look over towards uh, what happened with EG and PPD Spirit Breaker, the lowest network is still having a huge impact on the game. Just charging around. You've already got a level 4 Spirit Breaker. When's this going to start to affect the other lanes? Super with the Light Strike Array is the only thing that can stop the charge in. And in fact, uh, well, QO, they're moving up for him. Ice 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 got both Cox as well as the uh, Battery Assault for QO. Try and break free. The Light Strike Array not going to connect, but it does not matter. The Lena still having enough damage and QO dropping quickly. And Super with a haste, and he might go for more. Finds a stun over on Nuts, going deeper into the tree line. The Nuts, the power doesn't cast around, buys in space with a rocket and the attack. Gives a double kill over to VG Super. That ends up being a, a pretty costly misplay here from uh, from MVP. Unfortunately for them, Febby did not get the grave off. I think he got surprised by how fast QO got taken down and ultimately didn't manage to get the grave off. And that also gets Witch Doctor killed because if he had got that grave off, it's very likely that Lena would have chased. And at the very least, their Witch Doctor would have been able to uh, dodge off to the right. So this is very big for Vichy Gaming, getting a kill on Hal and two kills on Super. Already a 500 gold lead for them. They go again on top. This time the charge will be successful, however, because uh, FY led with the telekinesis. He knew he was able to just charge himself back down to mid lane. Big much. There's a lot of stacks inside the Radiant Jungle, which are going to start to be farmed up shortly. So some power leveling will be coming in the way of MVP Phoenix, and they need it. They're currently 2.5k net worth behind, and rapidly approaching 2k experience de behind, and we're only 5 minutes into the game. It's a kind of a... I don't want to say it's very unusual, but it's... It's a little out of the ordinary how much experience the offlaners of both teams are getting. The Clockwork is level 5.5, minute 5.30, and so is the Spirit Breaker, more or less. He's, he's 200 experience behind, but they're both level 5. This early, it makes for a very explosive game when you have two uh, team fight off laners such as Clockwork and Spirit Breaker. Where Marge in trouble Breaker again. He should be dead right now. He try and turn for a charge through three of them, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Maybe the Shallow Grave will be up, and March just get away from VG Gaming, or else you will die. The Sonic Wave in comes KP. While the Spirit Breaker may die, there'll be a double return as the attack flies up and kills off FY. The Morphling just decided to TP himself back out to base. Got a good rotation in from the Queen of Pain, and finally MVP Phoenix get themselves off the mark. Hal just waited so long. I think they could have waited for him to kill the Spirit Breaker before the Grave even came off. He wanted to be sure to get the last hit. It's understandable when you're playing the Morphling in this position that you want to be greedy and secure the kill. And maybe he was missing just that little last bit of damage to secure it. And the counterplay from MVP there, really important. Because yeah, this now is going to give uh, momentum towards KP. Up to level 7, and also able to finish up his full treads. Still Ice 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 now has his level 6 you were talking about. They're trying to do something with it. The leader actually rotated down to the bot lane to try and find some hookshot into Light Strike Array and Laguna. Just a quick pick off and then straight back to mid, but unable to find anything, he will still return to mid. Hero has to know there is a ward here. He's not regenerating when he's on his own cliff at night time. There has to be an upper ward, but he doesn't know where exactly it is. It's of course on Lena's own cliff. This negates a lot of Slark's strength in this mid lane during nighttime, which is usually when he starts having a really big impact. First of all, from reaching level 6 around that time, and secondly, of course, because of the extra night vision this hero has. The Mad Cow's on the charge. I think March then realized he's going to charge right through the middle of the mid lane. And he's uh, yeah, just trying to stick, stick just outside of vision, if possible. He was coming down for ice, ice, ice. He's actually trapped here until QO mops off the creep wave. Wants to keep his movements a little bit more secret. 
still wondering though, like if you if you do charge yourself in, can you find yourself in a bot lane without the Sonic Wave from KP? Is there really enough damage from MVP? We don't want to rely on 17% to win those fights. Archer's level 6, so... Oh, here comes your charge, coming after Super QO. Just wants to dive, he's got the Shadow Dance, Life Record Ray's gonna miss here, and in comes KP with a big Sonic Wave! FY getting hit by it as well, and QO chasing up with the Shadow Dance, just dealing out that Essence of Rubik, but then Venria buys a little bit of space, but you'll have the Dark back. FY gonna dive back behind the tower while the Cogs is marching for taken by the Shadow Grave, charging away, he's gonna get hooked, shut it down by Ice Ice Ice! There were still the two attacks from the tower that were chasing him, but Ice 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 caught on the wrong side of the river, KP still with Blink on cooldown for another 6 seconds, but has that double damage rune, he wants to go back to the lane, Ice 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 revealing himself in the lane, QO can look for the pounce right now, able to get down there, but no leash, but they still find the kill on Ice Ice Ice, waste a bit of time, but a kill is a kill, 5-5, five to five. meanwhile on top lane, Cal takes out the tier 1 tower, a bigger injection of money coming into that morphling of VG. It's still so good for MVP to get these three. I think QO got all three kills in that situation. He's also getting somewhat decent farm here in mid. He's tied with Lina. Of course, the Morphling now very far ahead because he hasn't rotated as much as the Queen of Pain has. With QO grabbing all of that money. It looks like he's going to be cruising toward a 10 minute Midas in that mid lane with Bottle, Wand, and a Poor Man's Shield. This is very early. And this hero is extremely snowball y. It's, it's one of the most snowball y uh, carries in the game. If you get far ahead on a Slark, the game really tends to go in your favor. It's very difficult to deal with, and I don't feel like Vichy Gaming has a particularly good lineup against them. Uh, MVP, they'll probably really wish they used that. Oh, actually, they get it in time. They lose their own Observer Ward, but they needed to use the Sentry or uh, the uh, Tango or Febby to get rid of that Orbs before the Super came down with the Sentry, and the War Battle left with just one Sentry Ward remaining for the Radiant side. I side side's looking for another kill. So he's moved off that bottom lane, searching for an opening. 10 minute rune's gonna be there too, an invis rune for him. But he'll actually leave it with FY. So they can also move the Rubik up. Gonna keep tabs on him as well. You do not want to give him anything. In fact, what does even FY look to steal here? He's gonna have his level 6 as his creep wave's gonna die underneath the tier 1 tower. But what's the Rubik really looking for to control MVP? Uh, there are a couple of really cool steals. I think the main ones to look out for is the Blink from Queen of Pain. Uh, Paralyze and Cast can be really good against Slark and Spirit Breaker because they both come in close. And of course, both, uh, I mean, a secondary mobility spell he could steal would be the Pounce of Slark. If he could grab Shadow Dance, that's generally huge, but it's a very difficult spell to steal. A Slark will usually be using another ability during Shadow Dance. And you obviously don't manage to grab it. Those are the main ones. In addition to, you know, Sonic Wave. Yep. It's going to be difficult to grab that when the scream should follow almost instantly. Fenrir actually being smoked up. He's here on a ward mission, leaving an, an aggressive ward behind the T1 tower where it used to be on the top lane. And March needs to charge away right now. Superstars with a the slave. They're still got frostbite, and that's why March does not want to charge. And there will be too much damage dealt to him before he can get away. So they are able to find the kill on the Spirit Break of VG Gaming. At the same time, KP and Ice 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 on bot lane. The battle continues as Ice 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 does have the hook shot available. He's waiting for KP to blink away so that he can just lock him in. The battery assault, in fact, just goes directly for the hook shot. The blink! Barely in the nick of time. Gets out of the cogs and away from the clockwork. QO did, of course, take that big flash farm as well with the rest of his team. So Weaver's up, Death Ward is up. MVP are getting a lot more team fight abilities. It's always interesting to see when Clock comes in close on a hero with mobility spells like Leap of Mirana, Blinks, to see how he plays it out. And Ice 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 slightly overestimating his damage there. If he hooks just one second later, he probably finds that kill. But then it's possible KP is just blink behind the creep wave. You need to assess when you have the opportunity. And if nothing else, he forced him back to base, as he should know. There's pretty much nothing on the Quap remaining as far as health goes. So he's almost going to secure his blade mail from this aggressive play. That's but pretty early with Tranquil's minute 12. The sad thing is for VG Gaming, they thought they would probably buy some space by sending that Queen of Pain back. But you've got a haste rune over on this Slark who's searching for a kill. Now, how was the best one he wants to go for? But they also noticed too that the replicate was moving out. The smoke didn't break. That's why they know it's either a replicate or an illusion. And considering they picked up a haste rune, they're gonna know it's a replicate. But they're gonna go deeper, as far deep in as they can. 
The lean is there, but there's no real ward. They've only just planted down a new one, so the only other choice they've got is to come in behind this T1 tower, where they'll find, in fact, both CM as well as Rubik walking into MVP! Venria, real trouble! They actually commit the death ward! The charge started on FY! Heavy commitment from MVP. They must have thought there'll be more coming, oh, but Qo wants to keep going. That. Back in behind the tower. In comes your charge. Qo jumps in, gets that leech, and now FY being bashed around. Two kills for MVP. They still got what they came for. The Slark pick is so good in this game because Vici's supports are completely outmatched by this hero. It's they don't have any defensive abilities, they don't have any mobility whatsoever. So the moment Kuro comes in close, if he gets the pounce on Rubik or TM, they're dead. There's yes. no counterplay until they get a Ghost Sucker, which is super far away for both of them. In the words of Shiva, they're just so squishy on VG Gaming. This is the reason why we're thinking, like, even, even something like a Spectre would just be able to just pop in. The Lena, the CM, the Rubik, which just takes so much damage early on, but when you've got Kuro that keeps charging around, Speaking of that, March gonna have a move up towards Hal. He does have Waveform available. There's gonna be your first hit. Strength warping up already. There's no more support coming here. And he'll make a replica so we can play the positional game. And March just needs to run himself out. But QO on the way in. Yeah, gonna go for the Dark Pack. And uh, up on the back of Morphling. Remember, he's still gonna get this charge. But let's get Perma Bash right now. He's not gonna die. But there's your 17%. He's still got the replicate Waveform up. And the jump away to safety. He had 12 one charges up his sleeve as well. How ice cold have you got to be to use waveform first <laughs> instead of just replicating out immediately there? Wow. That was really, really close. If, with a little bit of extra luck there from March, they would have been able to grab Hal. But they sent him back to base. Again, some good aggression coming out from MVP. And the good news for Vichy Gaming is that they obviously don't know this for sure right now, but they've got to have a pretty good feeling that Hal is ahead as far as Worm goes. He does have the highest net worth of the game right now, even against a Midas Slark with four kills. But he's only got a hundred in front. advantage is just... It's still good enough if he keeps up for now. The, the question for each game is how do they activate their supports? That's a very good question. Yule Scepter is now in for Super. He's going to need to actually stop March, but then again, no, he doesn't. March pulls out of the charge. And uh, Morphling coming in to defend on the top lane. This tower is the battle for the last hit. QO not going to win that battle, but 